This is a deck of playing cards. But before we get into that, let's get all nourished up. Okay, now we've eaten. This is a deck of playing cards. You've probably seen these on a lot of television programs, talent shows, all of those sort of things, like American sitcoms. This is like your most standard deck of playing cards that you've probably seen everywhere. This is a deck of playing cards. My name's Esgood52. And let's get back to basics. So like I said at the beginning of the video, this is a deck of playing cards. These are pretty much synonymous with any playing cards that you'll see throughout the world. Playing cards are playing cards at the end of the day, but magicians utilise them to perform magic. Now magic can be done with coins, magic can be done with gimmicks, props, mentalism, using the mind, napkins, bar magic, there's loads of things. But we're going to start off with cards. Cards is the first thing, I think it's the easiest way to get into magic. This series here, this series here is aimed at people who want to get into magic. This is for you guys who have always wanted to learn, who when a magician performs to you, you're like, oh my god, how's that done? You can learn how to do magic. But the problem is, and what we see in today's society is that people try and learn magic for different reasons. People try and get like the quick way there where they can film these reaction videos and put them online. Now, there's no problem. I appreciate the hustle. People that do that, people that get that reaction video and they're, they're transcend everything, they go viral, it's awesome. But what I've seen, I've seen, and what prompted me to do this series is that I've seen someone uh, on a gimmick Facebook page, there was like a prop, um, and it, you know, there's loads of tips and tricks and we will talk about different routines that we could do on there. And this guy was like, oh, I bought this, it's not very good, man. Like, I spent $500 on a load of magic, like, tricks that are already pre-made, um, and I just, you know, just thought I would perform them and film myself and hopefully get big. That's not what's magic about. That's what this series is about. This is taking things back to basics for those of you who are new into magic, even you intermediate guys who have learnt a load of things but you probably missed some steps. There's a lot of things that you think, I don't understand that. And this is what we're here to do. This is what we're here to teach you. So we're going to start right at the beginning. We're going to strip it right back to basics. And that is the whole point of this series. So like I said at the beginning, this is a deck of playing cards. What the playing cards come in is called a tuck case. Tuck cases are normally and typically now custom designed in loads of different ways, which is pretty cool. There's there's like so many different playing cards and these are actually just awesome. Now the bicycle is pretty much the standard playing card that magicians use. You've got bicycles, you've got red keepers and blue keepers, you've got cohorts. They're pretty much like your workers deck. These are the decks that you would use if you were performing at a wedding or something and you wanted to just get some cheap cards that you can write on, tear up, do loads of different cool tricks with. So now we know all about the tuck case. Let's learn about the cards. The cards come on a stock. Now a stock is just basically the paper grade. So you know when you get a notepad, you'll have like a 100 GSM or something. That's all it basically is, it's card. And what it is is you've got words like premium, crushed, you've got this sort of thing. All that is, that's all it is. So the cards have been crushed, it's like a paste and it's smashed between metal and you get flat pieces of paper. That's all it is. Now the cards are split into four suits and uh, anyone who's played any card game should know these. You've got hearts, you've got spades, you've got clubs and you have diamonds. Inside each suit you have 13 cards, you have one ace, you have a two to ten in numerical order, you have a jack, a queen and a king. So the jack, queen and king are also known as court cards and everything else is known as a face card which brings us on to our next point. So everything on the front of the card we call the face, like here on the four spades and everything on the back is obviously the back design. And while we're looking at the front here on the four spades, you can see in the top corner here, we have a number. Now that is the index of the card and all these little bits here, all these little pictures here of the suit it's in are all called pips. Like I said earlier in the video, and like I said with the tuck case, there is a lot of customization that goes into playing cards. So normally you have like the standard cards, like here on the king of spades, that's like your pretty much your standard image for a court card. However, there is a vast amount of customization that goes into it. And nowadays you even have like people's faces on there, you have famous people on them. You could pay on a Kickstarter campaign to have your face on a set of uh, playing cards. There's a ridiculous amount of customization that go into it. Loads, loads, loads. Now we know all about the index of the cards, the court cards, the name of the cards themselves. Now that's pretty easy to remember, but when you're doing some sort of tutorials online, you always see certain different words come up, like a biddle grip, a straddle grip or whatever. Maybe you might hear the words like a dealer's grip. So what sort of are these grips? Let's get the camera from behind and let's have a look at loads of different types of grips that we have in the playing card community. Okay, so we're gonna give a little rundown of all the various different types of holes that you're basically gonna use 
when you start learning out. So you've got like your standard grip. Now it's worth mentioning, if you are a right-handed person, you're probably gonna hold the deck in your left hand and then complete slight of hand with your right hand, okay? So that was three card, that was a triple lift. If you are left-handed, you probably do everything. You hold the cards in your right hand and you'll do tricks in your left. It's all dependent, just depends what you feel comfortable in, okay? I like to hold it in my left, that's just my thing, okay? So I'm holding the cards in now, it's sort of like a standard dealer's grip. So the way that works is that the cards are sort of against your palm, a 45 degree angle, so that your thumb is running along the edge of the cards here. I have my index finger on the top of the cards, just here, like sort of curled over, and then I have the rest of my fingers down the side sort of holding the cards here, like that. That's the standard dealer's grip, and it's called that because if you were playing poker, you could quite easily deal off using your thumb just like that. So we're going to move into a raised grip which looks like this and that's all it is. As you can see there, the cards are not touching my palm, it's in the top of my th the tip of my thumb and my fingers. For extra support, I move my little finger around to the bottom here and I can hold the cards quite freely and just move them around and no cards are coming free and that just feels really natural. That just feels, that feels fine. And from here, this is sort of the grip that you would do if you were going to do a Charlie air cut. or any other sort of one-handed cardistry moves. One other grip that is very useful for any learning magic is a biddle grip. And a biddle grip essentially is where you pinch the card like so, between your middle finger and your thumb. And you can hold the card like this. So you can use a biddle grip if you want to conceal cards. So for example, the nine of diamonds, if I put that in the last position and I count out cards, I can go one, two, three, Four, and I've only got four cards when in fact we know that the nine of diamonds is here at the back by the way if my throat starts sounding croaky it's because I've had a long old day and I'm trying to get this filmed ready and up for Friday so excuse the voice another thing that the middle grip is useful for is if you're going to do a Sigourney spread where you want to conceal the middle card so I'm going to show you you've only got four cards and you can see I've only got four cards here in fact we know that the Nine of Diamonds is just there, hidden at the back. Again, you can use for holding an entire deck, you know, and it's quite sturdy. I can really give that a shake. No cards to come off. And again, middle grip there is great for if you're doing swing cuts like this, or if you want to do some sort of cardistry move or some false shuffles. That then keeps everything where you want it. Okay guys, so I really hope that you have enjoyed the first video, the first installment, the first episode, whatever you want to call it, but back to basics. And the reason why I hope you've enjoyed it, do you know why? Because this is an educational process. Magic takes a long time to learn. It's one of those crafts you can't just get a quick way to, you have to practice, practice, practice. And this series is definitely going to help you and guide you in becoming a magician if that's something that you want to do. If you just want to learn a couple of tricks, just something cool just to show, you know, your friends and stuff like that, we're going to learn that along the way. It's great. There are tutorials out there, but if you want to learn the like the in-depth about it, you want to understand everything and get some knowledge behind it, well this is the series to do that. I've got the books, I've got the know-how, I've had three years of practicing all this sort of stuff. It's just, I'm giving, I'm giving you almost like a shortcut to just get through to where I am today, the how I've learned and everything like that. So if you have enjoyed this series, I would really appreciate if you give this a thumbs up. You may not think that it doesn't much, but honestly, it gives it a load of engagement when you give it a like, you give it a share as well on all your social media platforms, ask your friends to subscribe, that does an absolute wonder. And what it does mainly is it helps promote magic in a way that it is not cringy, in a way that it's not something that is, uh, you know, too, too much we see a lot of magicians and it's always, you know, the black waistcoat and the white gloves and the top hat and doves. That's old school. We, that's not what it is anymore. There, there's a magic can be done by people that aren't sort of kept away in the dark and poring over books all the time. Magic is is performed by real people for real people in order to get real reactions and just to give people a good time. That's what it mainly is. And uh, we need to move away from this sort of idea of the white gloves and the waistcoat. I just think that's an awful idea. What we need to do is we just need to promote magic in a way that is good. Promote magic in a way that is is fun, funky fresh, something that's completely different that's done before. So that's why I'm doing this series and that's why you should definitely give it a big like, thumbs up, subscribe, all that jazz and yeah, let's see how it goes. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you on the next one. Bye!
This is way too close for my face. No one should ever be this close to my face on camera. No one should ever be this close. Let's learn some technique. <laughs>